Are okay. We? I'm Dave. Uh, I'm from uh, Nearform. Hey, I'm Adrian. I work for Notsource. And we're super excited to share um, what we've been working on for quite some time uh, with the OpenJS Foundation. It's uh, the node certifications with an S. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah, uh, we have been working together for a year on this project. Uh, here we have the URL for the certification. You want more information about this talk. Uh, you can take a picture if you want. You can visit this link later. So let's start from the beginning. It really takes a community. This was born as a community effort. This was born at the very same conference we are right now. That was in Austin in 2016, mm -hmm. where Tracy Hines did the initial kickstart of this project. Here we are seeing some faces of the community involved in this project. So I'm sorry if I'm missing someone there. I promise I will put the picture back if you reach to me later. Uh, so yeah, thanks to the community for helping with this. Not only was it a cross-community effort, it also became a cross-organizational effort. And these were the uh, organizations involved. Uh, Nearform, uh, the company I'm uh, working with uh, uh, to, in a technical and uh, authoring capacity, uh, NodeSource provided, uh, uh, pro provides operational support and reviewing. Uh, OpenJS is the uh, leadership coordination in the certifying body. Uh, PSI for uh, proctoring, which we're going to get into a little bit more later, and Truability uh, are the uh, remote exam platform. Yeah. So um, why a certification and why now? Well, uh, in my opinion, the, the industry has, has got to a sort of a maturation point where um, uh, it, it has grown over the years uh, to uh, being, becoming much more involved uh, in, uh, in larger scale projects. Um, and in the tech industry in general, we have a demand versus availability uh, issue. The demand is high. Uh, and the availability can be difficult. Um, so what we need is uh, a, a kind of an optimization where we can standardize uh, a verification of skill level. And that's what we're doing with these certifications. Um, and it's also about opportunity creation where we can open doors to allow people uh, to come via other routes than uh, the typical. Um, because, as I said, there is a demand versus availability issue. <laughs> um, so the, the certification uh, was kicked off, as Adrian said, in uh, 2016 uh, in Austin. And we had um, uh, a, a group of people from across the industry. We had uh, Node Source and Nearform there. There was also, I believe, Walmart, Netflix, GoDaddy. Um, uh, Tierney's nodding. I, I, forgive me if I've forgotten anyone. <laughs> Uh, Tinny was there, right yeah. there in that hat. He was there. Actually, we were, you know, that was the avatar there. Yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. So in, in Austin, we, uh, we, we decided upon these principles that the certification should be outcome focused, uh, that it should be uh, framework and library agnostic, uh, that it should support real world practices, uh, that it was problem solving over puzzle solving. So we wanted to try to uh, distill it down to uh, actually solving problems that you would face in everyday life uh, rather than just technical conundrums. And uh, we also wanted to uh, not care about how it was implemented, just that it, was, that it solved whatever problem was being presented. Uh, in terms of quality assurance certification, uh, all of the questions have been peer reviewed by industry leaders, in including Adrian, but also uh, if, uh, you may know Matthias Booz, Charlie Robbins, or Luca Moraski. Uh, th these are, are all, uh, uh, you know, very technical people that are reviewed. Uh, it was also alpha tested uh, in, a, in a sort of free-form feedback way. It was beta tested with around 150 testers. And um, when we started off in Austin in 2016, um, we also had a psychometrician guiding us regarding the topics and the domains and how to break things up. And before we uh, went live, it also went for a final psychometric review with a few more tweaks. Um, in terms of the certification, uh, having long-term integrity, as in uh, making it so that it's not easy to uh, commoditize uh, from, a, from a cheating aspect, 
Um, there is variance. You don't necessarily get the same exact questions every time you take it. Um, it's, it's proctored by humans. Um, we're also going to have release cycles. We're going to keep it up to date, uh, which we'll talk about more later. And we also have the uh, ability to sample any uh, captured sessions and, and review them. So now we are going to discuss a little bit of what is actually to take a certification test. So here are the exam expectations for you. You will be taking the test using a remote desktop environment. This will work in a browser tab, so you will use a browser to actually solve the test. Uh, it will be remotely proctored, so you, we will have a real human uh, you know, checking the webcam and checking the desktop, everything you are doing for the test. Uh, so you can use any tool that you want, any, you know, any library that you prefer to solve the problems. As they already explained, we are checking for the results. We are not checking for the process you will do to accomplish you know, the solution. Uh, and you can use any online resource. So you can use uh, the, no documentation, wherever you want, but not Stack Overflow or related sites because we, are, we don't want you to be copying and pasting you know, code in, in the machine. So, yeah, you, you, you will get resources to, you know, to remember how to solve anything, but you can copy and paste the code. So this virtual machine, it will be a desktop Linux. Uh, it will be Mate. So you have to be a little bit familiar with this. Uh, you will have Visual Studio Code and BIM to solve, you know, as a code editor. Uh, you will have Postman, so you can check uh, the solution for your RESTful API uh, questions. You, ha you will have a uh, main terminal and Visual Studio Code terminal, and you will have Chrome as the default browser. So here's a screenshot of a machine. Uh, this is how it actually looks. Uh, at the beginning of the test, you will receive instructions in this initial screen. Uh, you will have a timer at the corner, as you, you can see. You will have two hours to solve the test, every test. And yeah, you basically will read all the instructions in this tab, and you will use code or beam, whatever you prefer, to actually solve this. So let's discuss a little bit about the exam overview. So they already say that we have two certifications. We have Node.js applications developer, and we have Node.js service developer. So let's discuss. So the Node application uh, developer exam is about assessing uh, your effectiveness at creating any type of Node.js application. So the way that we did that is we took an intersection of use cases and skills that would be required, and we test those rather than testing uh, you know, X application, Y application. So uh, theoretically, uh, by taking this exam, you should be verified at a basic fundamental level for overall competency with uh, uh, serv uh, creating servers, uh, creating uh, uh, you know, desktop applications, all the things that Miles was actually talking about before, um, this, is, this is what we're testing for. This is basic, fundamental Node.js knowledge um, uh, in terms of being able to use Node.js. You, you can use the core APIs or you can use libraries. It doesn't matter whether you use ecosystem or core. The point is, can you wield it effectively uh, to create any type of application. The only thing that's missing from the Node application developer uh, exam is the uh, domains around uh, servers because, um, whoops. Let's go <laughs> later. <laughs> let, me, let me come back to that in a second. Uh, <laughs> I should have gone over this more. Yeah. Uh, fundamental concepts, uh, it covers common use cases, key transferable skills, everything I just said, and it's marked on outcomes, not API knowledge. It's low library and framework agnostic. In the Node application developer exam, there's uh, lots of small questions. that are about five to 10 minutes each. That's different to the other one. Um, and there's 13 topic domains. Here's the, here's the secret source. Uh, those are the things you need to know, and those are the weightings for them. And here's a horrific, colorful monstrosity uh, <laughs> for you to enjoy with those in a, in a pie chart as well. Um, as I was saying, the only thing that isn't there is the uh, server stuff because... So we have Node.js Service Developer Certification. This is a total different certification. Uh, let's move. This will test... Uh, let's move to the next one. Yeah. So this will test practical effectiveness using uh, Node.js for real common problems, creating uh, servers and creating RESTful APIs. So let's move. 
So you will be creating basically servers, RESTful APIs, and testing your security practices around these applications. So you will find this, this is way different. You will have like a small set of questions, uh, but every question will definitely take some time. So every question will take you between 15 to 30 minutes. So you definitely need to code uh, like a regular Node.js web application, uh, RESTful API. And you can use whatever you want. We already said that. You can use Express, you can use HTTP core, you can use Pastify that, you know, just join the foundation, that's nice. So uh, it's basically two broad domains. We have servers and services, uh, which is 70% of the test, and pr security practices around this kind of application, that is 30% of the, the test. So to pass any of these certifications, you will need to score at least 68%. I know it looks a little bit low, but you know, it's tricky, it's actually really complex. You really need preparation for this, you really need to study and be prepared. But don't worry, if you fail to score 68%, we have a free retake. So if you, you know, miss it the first time, then you, the second one, you can actually, you know, be familiar with the test and take another chance to pass. So now we come to the issue of pricing. What's it gonna cost you? Um, when the, the, the certification was first launched in October, so some, some people might be aware that there was some pushback on the price at that time, um, which is very fair. Um, the, the problem with setting a price, a global price, is that uh, socioeconomic status, uh, even in the same country and around the world, they differ. Um, so uh, we wanted to do this, as I said earlier, as a door opening exercise, not as a gatekeeping exercise. So um, the exam price, as it stands, is $300 uh, dollars per exam. Per certification. Per, per certification, yeah. So uh, in terms of addressing that potential imbalance for some people, um, that $300 is totally affordable for companies uh, that want to have uh, employees certified. So that's staying for that purpose. Um, but it's not affordable for everyone. Um, so uh, when we initially launched certification, Robin uh, wrote a blog post, which you can find here, that was a response to some of the concerns around pricing uh, and how uh, we might be able to address that moving forward. So one of the key ways that the, the foundation wants to address this moving forward is with scholarships. Um, specifically, scholarships partnering with um, other organizations that, that represent specific groups of people um, that, the organization, that the foundation can uh, grant uh, sets of scholarships to. Uh, in order to do that, we really need uh, the, the, for people to start talking to each other. So if uh, you do represent uh, uh, an organization uh, or a group uh, in, in Canada, in the US, or anywhere around the world, please come talk to me, come talk to Adrian, come talk to Robin. Um, you, from that blog post, you can find Robin's uh, email. You can email her, um, because we'd really like to start moving with this and, and making sure that we can make this available, available to as many people as possible. Um, the other way... We, we have another way to actually solve this problem in the you know, immediate term. Uh, right now we have some promotions and we will be you know, uh, working to create more. Right now, the test, every test, if you want to take one exam, it will cost you just 180. So until it will tomorrow. Be until tomorrow. But here is, here is the good part. So you can pay now, but you can schedule your test in the future. So right now, you can actually pay for the certification at this price and say that you're going to take the test in two months. So that will give you two months to actually be prepared and take the test. So let's take advantage of this. If you want both certifications right now, it's 210. So it's pretty affordable, yeah. Both exams for that. And as I already said, you can you know, say, oh, I'm going to take this one in two months, I'm going to take this one in uh, three months, whatever. And you will be able to actually take it. So yeah, what is the future of this certification? So we are going to keep working on the pricing issue. I mean, this has been uh, the main concern of the community. Uh, for me, 
I have to fill in, you know, because I'm from South America, I represent, I represent a lot of communities there that can actually afford this price. So we are going to work through, you know, uh, this issue and provide an accessible price for everybody. Um, <coughs> also moving forward, we're going to be uh, making sure that the certification stays evergreen. Uh, we're going to synchronize it with the Node long-term support schedule. So currently, the certification is against Node 10. Uh, in April, Node 10 is going into maintenance, and Node 12 becomes the, uh, is already the LTS, but will become the remaining LTS. So in April, we'll do another release for the Node 12 LTS, and then in October, roughly, uh, Node 14 will be released, and we'll, we'll have the exam updated for that. So um, as Miles was saying about uh, the ES6 modules and so forth, if that lands in Node 14, the certification will be adapted for that so that it stays relevant, that it stays current. We'll also be uh, tracking industry best practices and conventions and assessing on a continual basis uh, the certification uh, for those needs. Um, also in the future, more certifications? Question mark? Um, so yeah, uh, we'd, any ideas uh, of how you, you would want to see that? Again, uh, we're on Twitter. Come talk to us, talk to Robin. Um, uh, we're really yeah. uh, interested in hearing what you have to say. So if you have more ideas, we are open to any comment. Uh, this, as I already said at the beginning of the talk, the, it takes a community. So if you want to be part of this, please come with ideas. Please come to help us, talk to us. So, and yeah, we are having, if you're interested in being certified, we are having a workshop. They have the information. Well, the information ah, right is here. right there. It's 2 yeah. p.m. later on today, room 541A. Both Adrian and myself will be there. Uh, we have uh, no source of set up an environment that's essentially uh, very similar to the exam environment, so you can have a play with it and, and see how it feels. Um, here is the URL again. If you want more information, here is take a picture, visit later, and join us to the workshop that we are doing. Um, if you follow us on Twitter, um, I've just I tweeted out the slides for this uh, before we started. So if you want to get the slides and see those codes or, or go over them, uh, find me on Twitter. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.